Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Level Up with CMJ. Hey, my name is Joe, and this is my Craps Master Dice Shooting Journey. Let's make it yours, too. So today we're going to go through the green belt level once again, and we're going to focus on our mechanics of the shooting the dice. And um, let's start off with our dice grips. I'm assuming that you've done your warm-up stretches already, and if you haven't, make sure you go back and do your stretches and your warm-ups and that. Um, but let's work on our intermediate dice sets to get our fingers working and to get everything uh, thinking straight here. So we're going to go with our 3V, which is our 3, 2, 3, 6. So set up the 3, 2, 3, 6. So it looks like a 3, 2, 3, 6. And the next one will be the 2, 1, 2, 4, which is our 2V. And we're going to go right into our all sevens, which is the 1265. And we're just going to go through each one of these another two more times, and then we'll move on to the next section of the green belt level. So again, we're going to go up to 3236, which is our 3V. We're going to go with the 2124. And we're going to go with the 1265. And we'll go through one more time. Each one, 3, 2, 3, 6, 2, 1, 2, 4, and a 2, 1, 6, 5. I'm sorry, a 1265. So that way we're getting into them as fast as we can and we're trying to get it so it's smooth. Next thing we're going to work on is our grip. So we got the dice setting down and let's work on our grip. So let's go to our hard way set and just get into your grip five times and make sure the dice are square, they're tight together and you get into your starting position. Okay. Five, four, five, four, get into your grip. And you're going to use whatever grip is comfortable for you guys, whatever you've been practicing. And if you are looking for a good dice grip, I have done two different videos that are in my playlist. And it shows you all the common dice grips that are out there. So one more time. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the release. So, what you're going to do is you're going to get into your grip. Actually, we're going to work on our stance. So, we're going to get in our grip. You're going to put your right foot back stance. So, that way, if you're shooting from stick left one, you want to put that right foot back. If you're shooting from stick right one, you want to put that right or left foot back. So just concentrate. So whenever I'm setting my dice, I'm square up to the table. And then I get in the frame of mind by putting that foot back. The other thing you want to do is make sure that your arm is in tight to the side of the rail. Or if you're bracing on top, you want to brace up on top of the rail. But however you set yourself up, and I'm going to go down here so you guys can see that. However you set yourself up. So if I'm, I always put my arm just on the inside of the rail. So when I'm shooting the dice, I'm right here. But if you want to put your arm on top of the rail, that's fine. Also, just make sure that when you do whatever method you use, you're up tight against that table. Um, so that way you have a base, you have something to brace your body up against, something to minimize that movement. So that way you're not going to be doing any extra uh, variables. You want to make everything constant. So we got the dice set. We got the dice grip. We get into our throne position. We situate our feet. We brace up tight against the table. Next thing we're going to be working on is bringing it up. When you get to the top, you're just going to drop your dice down. So you're going to release the thumb and just let them fall out. And when you're doing that now, you get to this position right about where you're going to release the throw, release the thumb, but make sure the dice are square in the air. So you're just going to release it so the dice are square in the air. 
And what I mean by that is that, and if you guys can see this on the screen, <clears throat> when I'm coming up, my dice are not crooked like this. See how that's crooked? That's square, that's crooked. So you're not doing anything like that. So you're gonna come up, bring it up so it's square, and it's straight down the line right here, right down that pass line or whichever line that you're lining up on. So we're just gonna go bring it to the top position and release that thumb so the dice just fall out of your hand straight down. One more time. We're going to come up and then release the thumb so the dice just fall straight out of our hands, straight down to the table. And it is cold in my basement, in my studio today. Um, it's the second day in a row where we've had zero like weather. Yesterday was negative five below in Wisconsin. Today is five above zero. And my basement is not heated, so, and that's where my craps table, my studio is located at. Last time, so we're just going to come straight up, dice are square, and release it with that thumb. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get that laser level going. And you want to throw it down the table now so that the dice go right up against that line. And I'm aiming it so it's straight on that, on the point on the Elgar thing down there. And by the way, guys, before we go any further, I wanted to make two quick announcements. Um, one was an announcement, and this is directed towards George from CY. In the Skype group chat yesterday, he asked everybody for their opinion on whether he should enter his uh, dice shooting tournament or not and everybody's in favor of him doing it I am as well um, George there's people out there that are going to be judging it so there is not going to be any cheating no favoritism no nothing there's no reason why you should not enter the, the competition because we are looking for some of the best shooters in the world and you are considered to be one of the top shooters um, and hey this is all fun anyhow um, so feel free join in and, and become part of the group here. Second thing I want to mention is um, a shout out to Casino Quest. If you haven't watched uh, their video last night, they did a live stream, it was quite a long one. And it was going over their five year anniversary. They've been open for five years. And it was a pretty amazing uh, uh, video that they did because they kind of went through everything that they've gone through up to this point all the hardships that they have and and all the successes that they've had it was pretty cool uh video so if you haven't checked it out make sure you check it out um congratulations to casino quest by the way uh for making five years in business and becoming successful on youtube so next part we're going to do is we're going to get into our dice grip we're going to be making sure our stance is good braced up against the table we're looking straight down the table towards our landing zone and we're just going to throw it straight down so it lands in line with that laser level light that we have flashing on the back of the table. And that one was just a little bit off for me. But the reason we have that laser level pointed down there so that way we know what a straight line is, where our target area should be on that back wall. And again, right now we're not worried about how close to the back wall we're doing. We're just trying to get it so it lands straight in line with that laser level. One cool thing about doing this is that you can watch the reaction of your dice. You know that you're releasing them square in the air and they're landing flat on the, on the table if they hit the table, bounce up, and then hopefully come straight back down and not bounce off to the side like they just did for me. And I have a tendency to have them go off to the left when they come off the back wall. So that means that when I'm releasing that my hand is not perfectly square, it's actually tilted to the right slightly. And that is one thing that I personally have to work on 
to get it better. And see the difference right there, guys? It went up, hit the wall, comes straight back down, and they landed relatively close to where they went up to hit the wall. So that means at that time my hand was square, and that is the main goal that we're trying to do with this. So, and again, when we do this now, focus also on the amount of energy that are in the dice. So in other words, you're trying to minimize that energy so when they hit the back wall, they come down and they land really close to the back wall. That is our goal so they're not flying over a table and increasing the chance of becoming more random. Um, Ed Robinson the other night on Craps Chat, Sunday night, had talked about dice influencing and you know, whether the dice are actually random or if they're coming down in a controlled fashion. Good morning, Mike. Um, and he mentioned that no matter what you do when you throw the dice, they're always going to be coming random when they come off that back wall. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to do a prediction of that randomness when they bounce off the wall. In other words, we're trying to do everything we possibly can up to that point to make everything a constant. We're trying to reduce or eliminate all the variables. So that way, when they do come off the back wall, it's gonna be a little bit more predictable. Even though it is random to some degree, we're gonna be able to control that randomness um, within acceptable measures. Um, and he, I did a terrible job of explaining it. He had a the perfect explanation and and how he explained what the goal is. And he and he says right in there, he goes, I have no idea how how it works. I have no idea how to uh, explain it any better than what he did. And and, and this is very true. He did a very good job explaining it. And that is our goal is to reduce the amount of randomness that's coming off that back wall. So anyhow, we worked on mechanics here so far with the dice throw. Again, we worked with our dice grip, we worked with our foots, our, our stance um, for our feet. We are working on the release of the thumb at the top position, making sure that the dice are square to the wall. And we're verifying that by watching how it lands at the other table, at the other side of the table, so make sure that they come down, hit up, and they come right back down. They don't fly off like the one dice just did. Um, so those are all the things that we're really working on. The other thing you want to concentrate on also is your breathing. And it's hard for me to do the breathing technique when I'm talking all the time, but what you're going to do is you're going to get set, look down the table, find your landing zone, your, your target area, breathe out. After you breathe out, you're going to hold your breath slightly, and then that's when you toss the dice. So it's going to be set up, look down, breathe out, hold, and toss down. And... If you saw what just happened when I wasn't talking and I actually did hold my breath slightly, it came up, perfect energy levels, barely touched the back wall. Right now, this dice right here is about a quarter of an inch off the wall. This one here is about one inch off the wall. Uh, so that, to me, is a pretty good landing location. They're both very close to where that laser level is located at the other side of the table. Um, so that means that they went down, they landed square, they came up, hit the wall barely, came down, and stayed up tight against that wall. So breathe in, breathe out, hold, and toss. So, okay, let's go on in the green belt level. Let's go to our six inch target. So we're going to put that six inch target so straight in line with that centered on that laser level line and it's about one inch. The edge of it is about one inch from the end of the table. And let's go through a few tosses at this level. And 
and we've got today's we got two more days on our green belt level so the next two days i'm going to be moving on uh past that small target we're going to go to that that nine area uh, zone uh, for lack of a better term target area that i made up in in the green belt level video um and we're gonna i'm gonna kind of explain how it works and it's very difficult to actually hit the actual targets on there that i had set up but the concept is what we want to learn more about and we'll go through that starting tomorrow so with the six inch target our goal is to get the dice down to the end of the table try to land it on a target bounce up hit the wall and then try to come back down on the target or, or be relatively close to it um, the area that the dice should be hitting on the back wall should be about the third bump or lower if possible so we're using the hard way set getting used to getting into that so when we go to the next belt level that's going to be our primary dice set that we're using so we can track and record the throws We'll do two more here. And then we'll reduce down to the target down below, our next target down, which is the four and a half inch target. A little bit short. It's a good result though, five, four, nine, center field nine. So that means everything was in access. Did a single pitch, which I'm fine with. With that hard way set, the bad throw would be the double, uh, would be the double pitch or the one implode and one explode. A little bit off to the right. Three, one, four, Big Joe from Craftsmaster Journey. Let's go down to the four and a half inch target. And this one we're gonna go again center on that laser level. We're gonna go about an inch to an inch and a half away from the back wall. That's four and a half inch target. And the targets that I'm using guys is actually remnants of the table layout. Um, I had stuff left over and what I did is I used that and that's just, Remnants of the table layout, the felt, or the, it's actually a, a microfiber. Um, Mike is asking on the chat here, he goes, Joe, on your grip, I see you lean the dice back. What about leaning forward, same grip? Um, I roll them back so I can get in. It's called a Yuri grip. If you guys can see that, I'm actually using, um, so I, I roll them back in order to get into the grip. I think that's what you're referring to. Rather than, I don't know if I could do that forward. I don't know, maybe. Um, I, if, for me, it's comfortable to just to roll them back. So that way when I'm rolling back, what I'm doing is I'm keeping those dice tight together. Let me see if I can do it this way. Um, it's kind of an awkward angle. But what I'm doing is I am pinching the dice together with my pinky and my index finger. And then I roll it back to get into the grip. Um, so that way what I'm doing is I'm putting my middle finger on the tip of the far side and then my thumb on the center of the back side. So I think that's what you're referring to um, because what I'm doing is I'm getting into the grip and then I tilt them forward and then when I throw it, it adds a natural revolution to the dice then. So, if 
think that's what you're referring to, Mike. If not, please uh, correct what my statement was on the chat, please. That was a good throw. So we'll do one more and we're going to go down to the four and a half inch target. Find it easier to lean the dice back. So you're seeing you go like this. Yes, I don't know how that would be. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll keep on going here, and maybe we can make an addition to the to the chat here to the comments. Good. Okay. Let's switch down to that three and a half inch target, and this three and a half inch target is going to be centered again. We're going to go about an inch and a half or so away from the back wall. Um, you can probably even go up to two inches if you want. You kind of play around with it and adjust it in that. So I'm, yeah, I'm kind of confused, Mike, on what you're saying by you find it easier to, you mean to lean it forward this way when you set up? And if, if that's the case and that, if that works for you, keep on doing that as long as the end result is what you're looking for, meaning that I don't care how you get into your dice set, uh, how it works for you as long as you are in a position that's comfortable for you and that will allow you to release the dice square at that top point. Um, Alfredo from Texas Craft Shooters kind of made the analogy of golf. You know, he really doesn't care how you swing, what it looks like, you know, all this stuff. As long as the end result is the ball flies straight down the fairway and does not hook or, or curve or, or anything like that. It's the same thing with dice. You know, whatever's comfortable for you guys, dice grip, as far as getting into it, the type of style, um, you could do the three finger par grip if you wanted. You know, you could do something like this. Um, I do the Yuri grip. You could do a two finger if you want. You can use your middle and your thumb which a lot of people do. Some people do the ring finger and thumb, um, which I have a hard time getting into. You could do like a two finger Yuri grip if you want, which I'm considering possibly doing because the thing with the Yuri grip is that for me, it's really easy to get into because it's natural for me to do it this way, but also I can kind of get into the grip and, and really not, um, have to look at it much. I can mostly go off by feel. I know that the dice are, are not square if I feel something like this, where you know they're off just by a little bit. I can feel that on my fingers and that. Good morning, CCC. Um, so that's something that you know to consider in that. Um, and you like the same set, the 5454, four, four, that's your hardware set. That is probably one of the most common dice sets that people use at the crafts table. And the reason being is because um, obviously people try to hit those hard ways in that. Um, but the reason is a lot of times people use the hard way sets because it's easy for them to see if they're going off axis. You know, so when the dice land, our, we start off with the 5454. Five, if a 1 shows or a 6 shows, you know that you had an implosion or an explosion of the dice. And that's something that we're going to be working on trying to identify in the blue belt level, the second part of the blue belt level. Um, and then the purple belt, which comes after the blue, we're actually going to be doing things to help correct um, problems that you're seeing in the dice, in the dice results. Uh, for example, yesterday when I was throwing, I was doing a lot of double pitching, and one of the comments that George from CY made was to concentrate more pressure on that middle finger and the thumb, so that way it will hopefully 
eliminate any of that double pitching that was going on. And I tried it, and within a throw or two, I kind of eliminated that double pitch, which is really, really neat to see. Um, and that was something that I did not know. Again, like I said yesterday, this is a dice shooting journey for me. Um, I have done a lot of research on shooting the dice, the things that you want to do, the mechanics, you know, all that type of stuff. But I am no means an expert in it. There's lots of people out there that have done this for a lot longer time than I have, uh, have a lot more practice in, in that, what I do. Um, so this is a journey for me. This is going to be a journey for all of us. And, you know, if you see things that are going on with my throw, if you have little tips, that was way long. If you have little tips of uh, things that you could do, um, you know, that you could share in that, by all means, feel free to share. Put it in the chats, put it in the comments. Good morning, Biff. Biff is saying that the Yuri Grip is better for bouncy tables. That I do not know if that's true or not. It could be, could very well be. Um, I know my table is a semi-bouncy table. So I was talking about double pitches here in the last two throws have been a double pitch. So I got to stop talking about some of the stuff because as soon as I start talking about it, it starts happening. Sort of like riding your bike, your mountain bike down a trail and you see a big rock that you don't want to hit. And if you look at it, you hit the darn thing every single time. So you actually got to look away from it. So I talk double pitch and it double pitches. I talk implosion or explosion and implosion or explosion happens. Well, isn't that true for everything, guys? So we'll go through a couple more here, guys, and then we're going to wrap her up then. Oh, Biff is asking if the Yuri group is better for a bounce table. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with the bounce at all. For me, it has a lot to do with the grip, um, with getting into it. For me, I know that if I'm in the Yuri grip, it's easy for me to, to get into it and not really have to look at it as closely to know that it's in good. The reason I started doing the Yuri grip is because when I first started throwing the dice, I tried getting into that three finger power grip. And every time that I got into it, the dice would always split on the front side for me. And it was really hard for me to um, get into it comfortably. Now I get into it pretty decent uh, now that I've been throwing it at a little bit longer. Um, and believe it or not, that Yuri grip actually helped me get into that three-finger power grip, which I don't use much of anymore. Um, but it helped me get into that a little bit easier and to keep the dice tighter. But every time I got into that three-finger uh, power grip, it would always split apart on me. And I was having a hard time getting those together and keep them together. Um, so that's why I went to the Yuri grip. And and I actually didn't even know it was a Yuri grip when I first got into it. I knew it as a three-finger front diagonal is what I knew it as. So well, one more throw here, guys, and we'll wrap it up for the day. So the three, three, hard six. Land a little short, but it did go in straight. Dice have ears. They do, CCC. <laughs> At least mine do. So you don't talk about what you don't want to see, right? And right before I started shooting today, I was doing some practicing and kind of weird. Um, I went with the... Um, 5454 four, Hydroid four, set, and I was throwing it so it was actually double pitching. Um, so I did something slightly different. Instead of doing what George had suggested with the more finger pressure on the thumb and the, and the uh, middle finger, what I did is I just rotated my dice one face forward. And as soon as I did that, the weirdest thing happened. I had five hard ways in a row. Um, it was kind of kind of probably a fluke, but it was kind of cool. So all I did is I took the 5454 five, hardware set with my double pitch. I just rotated it once, thinking that because it, with the hardware set, if you do a double pitch, it adds up to a seven on all sides. 
So um, my theory was if I roll it once, if I get the double pitch, it's going to be an eight or a nine or a six or a five. So it's going to be one of your inside numbers. So that was kind of a neat little thing. Um, but what happened, like I said, is it went to hard way results. So I got five hard ways in a row. So, and that was a four, two, six right there. So a little trick that you guys can use. Um, but anyhow, let's go over our heart to our homework, um, homework corner here, guys, really quick. And we'll go through what we need to do uh, for today. Today, we start off with our warm ups and our stretches before the video actually started. I went through and I broke down the mechanics. So make sure you break down the mechanics. Make sure you work on your three intermediate dice sets, which is your three, two, three, six, your two, one, two, four, and your one, two, six, five dice sets. Do those a few times. And then we're gonna break down mechanics of actually how you're standing, how you're breathing, and how you release the dice. Making sure that you release with your thumb. Um, and then we went with the laser level and we tried to throw it straight down the table. You're going to do that five, ten times, whatever's comfortable for you. And so you can get consistently straight down the table. And then we brought out the targets. We started off with a six inch target and I did about five or so throws at that. Went to the four and a half inch target, did another five or so. And we finished off with a three and a half inch target. Um, and I was supposed to do, you know, you should be doing 20 plus throws at that small target until you get comfortable with it. Uh, we didn't do as many throws today because we had some good chats going on in the chat. But anyhow, guys, hey, my name is Joe. This is my Craftsmaster Dice Shooting Journey. Let's make it yours too.